Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining y'all gas turbine cycle which is using the reheating method. That is why we are using the reheating method. First of all, I will start with the formula of efficiency and in that to explain the reheating in case of gas turbine cycle, since we know that efficiency denoted as eta, it is given by W net upon heat supplied. Now when we look at W net that is the net work which is available to us that is turbine work minus compressor work. It means whatever work is produced by the turbine from that if we subtract the work which is consumed by the compressor then we are going to get the net work. Now heat supplied is the amount of fuel injected or amount of fuel used in the combustion chamber in order to heat the compressed air which is coming from the compressor. Now when I want to increase the efficiency, I can clearly see that efficiency is directly proportional to the net work that I can say since efficiency is directly proportional to W net. It means if we want to increase the efficiency then W net has to be increased and the method of increasing the net work is either to increase the turbine work as we can see W net is directly proportional to the turbine work. So turbine work can be increased or we can decrease the work consumed by the compressor. So whichever way either increase the turbine work or decrease the work consumed by the compressor because we know in case of gas turbine 70 to 80 percent of the work which is produced by the turbine is consumed by the compressor. So if we can decrease the work consumed by the compressor or increase the work produced by the turbine, the net work increases. So that is one of the methods to increase the efficiency for a gas turbine power plant. Another is to reduce the heat supply. For that we are using the regeneration method and regeneration I have covered in one of my, one of my videos. So the link would be provided in the description below. You all can refer that. So now since efficiency is directly proportional to W net and we know that either we have to increase the work produced by the turbine or work consumed by the compressor. So in order to explain it, I'll just quickly draw the diagram how the cycle would be looking like. And whenever you all are drawing this reheating cycle, you all have to draw two turbines. So we have to diverge this. And between these two turbines, I'll name them. This is the compressor here. This is HP turbine and this is LP turbine that is the low pressure turbine and in between both the turbines here they are connected on the common shaft. We have the combustion chamber and inside this combustion chamber the fuel is sprayed if it is direct mixing type or open cycle gas turbine. So we have the fuel injection over here and if it is closed cycle gas turbine in that case the fuel would be passing through a pipeline parallel to the gas which is passing through the other pipeline like in case of heat exchangers. Now, so from high pressure turbine, whatever the exhaust is there, it goes again into the combustion chamber which is over here. Also called as this combustion chamber since it is reheating cycle, it is basically called as the reheater. Because originally we have one of the combustion chambers that is just after the compressed air has passed through the compressor. Here I am drawing this combustion chamber like it is indirect mixing type. It can even be a direct fuel spraying like I have shown in the reheater and here it is indirect. So now what happens in this cycle is at point number one the atmospheric air enters the compressor. It gets compressed in the compressor so pressure and temperature increases. That compressed air will pass through this heat exchanger which is also called as the mostly it is used in case of closed cycle gas turbines. Now. So at point number two, we have compressed air that gets heated and after heating, it reaches point number three or state three, it enters the high pressure turbine and then when it enters high pressure turbine, there is expansion of gases in the turbine and we get mechanical work. Then that exhaust which leaves the high pressure turbine is reheated again because this is reheating cycle. So it enters the reheater at point four and leaves the reheater at point five where it enters the low pressure turbine and finally we get another expansion in the low pressure turbine and the exhaust gases 
we get at point number 6. Similarly, if these same exhaust gases are returned back for heating the air, which is coming from the compressor like this same exhaust is returning and it is reheating, it is heating the air which is passing through the compressor. So that cycle is called as the regeneration cycle and it leaves at point number 7. Now we can see since there are two turbines employed over here, it means we are going to get more turbine work. So therefore, here the turbine work would be the work produced by high pressure turbine plus the work produced by the low pressure turbine. So hence we have increased the turbine work and once turbine work increases W net will go on increasing and finally the efficiency goes on increasing as we can see over here. Now this is one of the method by which the specific work output or we can say here W net or the network increases and but there are some arguments like for example we are using one of the heat exchangers over here or the combustion chamber for reheating so heat supplied also increases so it means when the pressure ratio is less then the effect of reheating cannot be seen mostly reheating intercooling regeneration they are used together so w net when it increases the efficiency increases but at the same time we are seeing that heat supply is also getting increased so the effect may get cancelled out but that is why it is preferred to use reheating intercooling regeneration together to get the combined output or combined benefit of these cycles so these this was one of the method that is reheating of the gases again in order to get or increase the turbine work one of the other method is to reduce the compressor work and to reduce the compressor work or work consumed by the compressor is by using instead of single compressor we can use multiple compressors also called as multi-staging in that way the work consumed by the compressor will go on reducing so that i'll explain in another video and finally whatever the work is produced by these turbines consumed by the compressor at the outlet we are getting the network which can be used to generate electricity here we have a generator which can be used for the production of electricity. So here this is a small description of the reheating cycle. This will even be explained on the TS diagram. On the TS diagram it can be explained in this way. I will just quickly go on explaining. These are the pressure lines, the different diverging pressure lines. Now first we have isentropic compression from point 1 to 2. I am assuming that the compression is ideal isentropic. 2 to 3 it is heating in the combustion chamber then 3 to 4 it is expansion in high pressure turbine now from 4 to 5 it is reheating so 4 to 5 the temperature will go on increasing and for ideal reheating the temperature t3 and temperature t5 should be same for ideal reheating but here i am assuming that it is less so it is up to 0.5 and then we get expansion in the low pressure turbine that is at point number 6 so here the pressure is p1 here I am saying that this is the reheat pressure, reheat pressure and here this is the high pressure, I am denoting it as P2 equal to P3, the high pressure so, and finally I am completing this cycle up till here because regeneration, I won't be explaining on this, this video is specifically for the reheat cycle, so process 4 to 5 is what is showing us as the reheating arrangement or reheating cycle. So in short that was a video regarding the reheating process. At the end if you will find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends. Thanks for watching.